So I'm going to review a book that I was expecting not to like, but I really, really enjoyed it. And it is so good, good. They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport. And I have a few notes here that I took while I was reading the book. So the first one, basically it's the things I liked about the book. So the first one is, it's hard to predict the right passion. So it's hard to predict where you'll end up, which means it's hard to figure your passion out right from the start. So don't try to figure things out. Start taking small steps towards something you're interested in. Explore your options, be practical, and move forward from there. The next note I have is thinking that there's some magic job waiting for you out there. And I like to translate this into online business terms, which is thinking that there's some magic passion or perfect passion out there for you, which there probably isn't. And you may only find it years after you've started your path. So the important thing is getting started. So don't wait for perfection. Start taking small steps. Start experimenting and seeing what happens. And the third thing I liked, and I really liked this one, was to be so good they can't ignore you, which basically means cultivate the skills you need in order to be valuable in the marketplace. So if, you, if we take a common example, which is I want to start a blog and I want to start a blog. So if you want to start a blog, you have to look at how you're going to make money, what you're going to provide for people that they will be willing to pay for and read. So you have to become good enough so that people will want to read and buy stuff from you. A good example of what not to do is to start a blog about how to make money blogging when you aren't making money blogging because you aren't delivering any value or anything new to people. Point number four I wrote down was don't try to figure your passion out in advance, which is kind of like one of the previous points. But the thing is that you can't figure life out. You can't figure out what your passion is. You can't figure out where to find your perfect job. You just have to start. You have to follow the clues. You have to listen to your intuition, your inner GPS, as I like to call it, and you have to take it from there. You don't have to figure life out because life will figure itself out when you get out of the way. So point number five was skills first. So don't just quit your job and expect miracles to happen. You have to cultivate your skills. You have to become good. You have to become better. So if you want to start a blog about growing tomatoes, do you know how to grow tomatoes? Are people interested in that? How are you going to do that? Do you have a mentor you can ask questions from or someone who can give you feedback on what you need to do? So there are a lot of things you have to consider. Number six is deliberate practice, which means that you put in real work. For example, if you want to write a book, then start working on your book. Start improving your writing skills. Start reading more. Stop spending time checking email, being on social media, or whatever small tasks that you use to distract yourself from putting in real work. So deliberate practice means putting in work that makes, makes you uncomfortable, that stretches you, as Cal used the word stretch in the book, which I really liked. So stretch yourself. Find your comfort zone, push beyond that, and enjoy your discomfort zone. And the next point was that most people stumble on what they enjoy. So instead of thinking that you have to figure life out and find the perfect passion, look at it as a time to play and experiment and have fun while also being practical. So don't worry about finding a big thing. Just start small, start with the next step, and then start moving forward from there. That's how I built my, 
my business and I found my passion. I stumbled on it after just being so sick of my excuses that I started taking action. And the next point that I really liked was to provide real value. And all of these points I'm covering are kind of blending and merging together, but I really think they hold all of them hold value because they come from different angles. So the next point was to provide real value. So if you're growing tomatoes and people want information on that, can you show them step by step how to grow tomatoes indoors, outdoors, how to solve different problems such as weird creatures eating their tomatoes or whatever comes up. So are you able to provide real value to people? If not, then work on improving yourself first and your skills before you start trying to sell people stuff. And I'm not talking about you don't have to become an expert and know everything to help people and get paid. You just have to learn what you need to learn in order to help people move forward. So you could help beginners grow tomatoes and you could know more than them without being the all-knowing expert in tomato growing. The next point that I wrote down was do what people are willing to pay for. So find the intersection between what you want to do, what you're good at or want to learn to become good at and what people are willing to pay for. So it's not just about following your passion, but about finding the intersection between what people want and what you want. And then I really liked this one because he said, or I'm wildly paraphrasing here. So what I wrote down was don't be radical. Let your business, side business, gain momentum before, we, before you quit your job or do anything crazy. So if you want to start your tomato growing blog and you want to build it into a business that supports you, then use the job you have. Use the security you get from there. Use the money you get to fund your business, to experiment, to learn, to make mistakes and to grow. So don't be in a rush to get anywhere because there's nowhere to get. Life is a continuous journey. And even if you build your business, even if you are living a passionate life, you'll still have new goals. So for example, I've been doing work I love for many years now and I still want more. I have more goals because life pushes us to grow. So we're on a never-ending journey. So if you're chasing happiness, you'll never get there because happiness is a habit that comes from the inside. And the last thing was little bets. And I talk about this a lot on my blog and my courses and everything I do. And I use the term baby steps. Because if you want to start a business, if you want to find work you love, you have to start small. You have to start by experimenting. So if you do have something to offer with your tomato growing blog, then start with a small product. Create an ebook, see if people want to buy it. And this is assuming you built an audience. So make little bets, as Cal puts it, and see if things work. And if they don't, try something else. And use your job in the meantime to support yourself while you make these little bets. Now, there were a few things I didn't like, but they are minor details. For example, the definition Cal uses for passion seems to be people going after a fantasy of thinking that if they can only find their passion and then do what they love or follow their passion, then they'll be happy. But that's a fallacy. So that's a minor detail about this book where I differ, but I really, really enjoyed this book. I read it in one day and I recommend you pick it up because it contains a lot of practical tips and it explains a lot of things that I already do and teach but it talks about them in a different way. So I, have, I just have to say that if you're looking to do work you love and get paid to do what you love, I recommend you pick up So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport, which you should be able to find in any offline 
or at least online bookstore.